your hands together in God's house. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet and bless his holy name. This is the first Sunday in 2024. Hallelujah. We want to set the tone, amen, for the next 52 Sundays. Hallelujah. Set the tone and set the atmosphere. And give him a praise and give him some glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He is high and lifted up. Amen. And let his train fill this temple. Hallelujah. Are you the temple of God? Let his train fill you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As you clap those hands, go ahead and wave across the room to somebody like we do here at Parkview. Amen. And let them know, amen, that you are a living testimony. You are a living testimony. Tell somebody else. Say, I'm a living testimony. I'm a, I'm a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone, but God, you let me live on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying for grieving hearts right now. Hallelujah. Amen. We are praying for grieving hearts right now. So let's set an atmosphere of praise in this place. Amen. Somebody shout his name in this atmosphere. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Whatever it is, give it over to God right now. Let him strengthen you. Let him build you up. Hallelujah. We set the atmosphere of praise in this place. Somebody say, shout to me, I'm trading my sorrows. Somebody say, I'm trading my pain. Hallelujah. I'm trading my sickness and shame for the joy of the Lord. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And we come to bless his name in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The song says, I'm trading my sorrow. Yeah, you know it. I'm trading my shame. Persecuted but not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. And I'm blessed beyond a curse for his promise shall endure that his joy is gonna be my strength. Yeah, yeah. No sorrow may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, 
to your will, God. Yes to your way. seats and we start our first 2024 first Sunday I want you to set an atmosphere set a tone for the next 52 Sundays whether you're here whether you're gonna watch it online if you're out there as well whatever you're doing set a tone for this house amen for your community wherever you are if you're in Polk County here's Borough wherever you're Orange County Osceola wherever you are set that tone Leave here with a residue of worship and praise. Amen. I want you to leave here with a residue of worship and praise for someone. So for just for a second, for a few seconds, if you don't mind tapping in, tapping in not to a notification, but tapping into who he is to you. What is he to you? Hallelujah. If you don't mind putting that in the atmosphere, what is he to you? Hallelujah. God, you're everything. I hear y'all over here. God, you're everything. God, you're, you're almighty. You're, you're my you're my king. Hallelujah. Send your worship out into this atmosphere. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, put him in the atmosphere. Come on, hallelujah. Hands are raised. However you want to do it. Healer. Come on, somebody. Curse break. Whatever he is to you. Hallelujah. Lord to God, way make miracle work, promise keep light in the He's and that is Ooh, Jesus. Yeah, He's a a way make a miracle work, a promise. Sometimes you're on the road and tears are just flowing and you just want to tell them again. Way make up. that child and nephew and niece way make up because the enemy tries to start working here and you have to drown the enemy out with a worship and a praise and say in way yes he is dark place. Light, he's light 
in that. Everybody say that together. Wave maker. Say it again. Say he's a way. Miracle word. From his kingdom.
specializes in things that seems impossible. You are him in this place, uh-huh, a whole turnaround, I, 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 I'm doing a whole, a whole turnaround, God, say it again, you are here, I'm going to take that worship to another level, mending, because in this world we will have trials and tribulations.
This is a new start. We stepping forward. We want to thank the Lord for bringing us here. Blessing us, blessing our families, watching over us each and every day. Father God, the road has been rough. The hills have been high. The valleys have been low. But you know, when you're guiding us, it makes no difference where you're from, where you're heading, because he's right there beside us. Father, we want to thank you this morning. Thank you, Father. I can't thank him enough myself because I know these men that are standing on my left and right, they know how I was when I first came to this church. But you know when God step in and turn your life around, it ain't about me. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. We want to thank him this morning. Father God, please, please, Father God, reach out to the ones that's not here this morning, Father God. Reach out to the ones that's here my voice this morning, Father God. Bless them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, Father God. We know that you can do all things, so we put it in your hands that you can take care of whatever's going on in this world because it's a lot going on out there, Father God. It's a lot of hatred. It's a lot of people doing harm to each other. But, Father God, I know that you're going to solve all this problem that we're going through today, Father God. We just want to say thank you once again. Father God, reach out to the ones that's in the senior citizens' homes. Reach out to the ones that's shut in. Reach out to the ones that's in the prisons, Father God. They need your help, too. Not just here this morning in Parkview. But when you know what I want to say this morning? If God has been blessing you and your family, please stand up. Please stand up and acknowledge to let him know how you appreciate him. Go ahead. Make some noise. Make some noise. Let him know. Let him know that you love him. We want to thank him. Thank him. Go ahead. You can have a seat. You can have a seat. Be seated. Father, I know myself and there's others here in the sanctuary that you've been blessing them and their family, Father God. So you know, sometimes we might stray away. Things might not go the way you wanted to go. But you know, when you put your hands in it, and just turn it around and, and start blessing. So thank you, Father. Reach out to these men and their families, the men that stand on my left and right. Bless them and their families. Bless them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, Father God. Also, bless every ministry in this service. And watch over them and their families. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Proverbs 18:21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Good morning, Parkview. I'm Sister Yvonne Hill, and these are your announcements for today. Ladies of Parkview and friends, you are invited to join the Word Ministry as we travel to Sarasota to the West Coast Black Theater Troupe to see the production Ruby. Tickets are available for purchase at the welcome desk while they last. 
We hope you will join us. Parkview, the church is preparing to send out your statement of giving for 2023. If you would prefer your statement to be emailed, please email the church at info at pclctheview.org or call the church office. Thank you. Attention all Parkview Ministries. The Haines City MLK Parade is Saturday, January 20th at 11 a.m. If your ministry would like to represent Parkview and participate in the event, please contact Sister Sharon McGriff as soon as possible. Good morning, Parkview. Once again, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. On this Saturday, January 13th, the men's ministry will be hosting the first men's breakfast of the year. As in the past, our menu will leave nothing to be desired. It includes waffles, bacon, sausage, or both beef and turkey, eggs, pancakes, fried catfish, fruit, juice, coffee, and yes, we will be prepared to serve those who are vegan. We are inviting all men to come out and join us in the sharing of food and fellowship. For our new members, what better way to get acquainted with your new brothers in Christ than breaking bread together in unity? The breakfast will take place again this Saturday morning and will start promptly at 8.30. If you plan on attending, please text YES to 630-639-8163 so we can better be prepared. See you on Saturday. God bless. Parkview. Please send all announcements Tuesday evening before that Sunday to announcements at pclctheview.org. Be sure to spread the word about our monthly food giveaway here at Parkview every first Friday of the month. Text PCLC to 833-600-9222 to sow a seed into the ministry. Also, you can view every service live from anywhere when you subscribe to Pastor Henry Babers on YouTube. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss the word. To our visitors, on behalf of the Parkview Christian Life Center family, we welcome you and thank you for joining us. God planned for you to be right here and we know he has a word for you that will change your life. As a reminder, all services are recorded, so we ask that you please limit your movement during the sermon. Please make sure all small children are accompanied to the restroom by an adult. Also, it is very important to turn off or silence all cell phones. And please, no eating or drinking in the sanctuary. Let us respect God's house. Now, Prepare yourself for the word of excellence and to receive the kingdom vision and provision God has for you. Again, I'm Sister Yvonne Hill, your announcer. Thank you. And remember, this is the year we speak life. God bless. This is the day the Lord has made. Come on, let's really rejoice. First Sunday, 2024. Come on, let's say it again. The first Sunday in a brand new year. And the Lord has kept us. And the Lord has brought us. And we're still praising him. 
because of his goodness and mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Amen. I don't, I, I, I just don't take it for granted uh, from year to year or even from day to day. It's just God's goodness that keeps us and sustains us. Amen. And I just give God praise for his goodness and mercy toward us and never take it for granted. Amen. So much could have happened. How many of y'all know that? So much could have happened, but God. Come on, say me, but God. Amen. Amen. Um, listen, um, you know, now next month is our grand day of sacrificial giving. Amen. Uh, for those of you that already know what I'm talking about, the overtop giving, give God a shout. Praise for it. Uh, every... Every year, the third Sunday in February, the church does something uh, that's special. We have our sacrificial giving Sunday where we stretch ourselves beyond our tithes and our offering. What has that done over the years? It has been such a blessing as we have moved forward in the natural realm and allowed us to build this beautiful edifice and all the 25 acres that are around it. Uh, give God a praise for that. That happened fast because of sacrificial giving. And then there have been so many testimonies of those who have trusted God during that third Sunday and, and uh, beyond, a little beyond that. But we just said, you know what? I'm going to plant this sacrificial seed. And there has been great testimony come and saw how, uh, sharing with how God did miraculous work and movement in their lives. So I look forward every year uh, that we do natural things with the seed and God give us spiritual blessing because we walk in obedience. Amen. So let's give God an awesome praise again for the overtop giving, for the overtop living. Amen. It has been a blessing. That's all I can say. What a blessing it has been to us in so many spiritual ways. Amen. Uh, also, uh, we have someone um, outside uh, when you get ready to leave today uh, trying to get prayer back in school. They worked, they worked hard, listen, while the body of Christ was asleep at the wheel, people were working hard to get it out. Now you have to work hard to try to get it back in. So if there's anyone on your way out, you want to pick up the application and uh, sign your name to it, it would just... Um, be recognition that you are one of the people. You got to get so many people just to get the attention of the lawmakers. Amen. So by all means, stop outside. Amen. Uh, also, we have our, our little news uh, part, part we press, and one of the things in the back of it is the calendar of event for 2024. Be sure to get one today, and that you will know what's going on all year long. Amen. Some things will change, some things will be added, but this is the foundation of what uh, the events. So you can plan ahead of time. Uh, so it's quite a few there, about 30, 25, 30 events that we already got scheduled for this year. So get one, look on the back, and be sure to uh, schedule some things around it. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, next week we will have our, our T-shirt design out. Uh, this year, again, our theme, we move from choose life to this power of this tongue, where we're going to what? Speak life. Give God a praise for, amen. Matter of fact, that's on the top of, in the front of our uh, news press. Speak life. The power of the, our words. And believe me, they, they carry great power and significance uh, as we speak. They're just not words. They carry power. They carry significance. Amen. So God bless you so much. Again, we thank God for you now. As you, again, go out, be sure don't, you know, some of you go this way, some of you go that way. But uh, be sure to go out in the forum and uh, uh, get a thing for the prayer to get they, uh, keep uh, praying school. Amen. All right, God bless you so much. Uh, third Sunday of this month, 
Uh, we don't do many outings, uh, but we will be going to Pastor Taylor and Winter Garden. And Pastor Taylor has such a great um, uh, relationship with us, and we have such a great... No, we don't want to pass them out now. We don't want, we'll make sure that they get them in the end, all right? Uh, I don't want everyone to have one right now because through the service, y'all going to be playing with them. And, but be sure, the usher, listen, the usher will have them. You know, be a desk outside. Just take a few extra minutes out the church. If you already have one, keep it. But take a few minutes out the church and um, get one from the ushers or, get, or go outside where the desk is at. Amen? All right, God bless you so much. This also is Pastor Blessed Day, first Sunday of the year. Amen? So as we prepare our hearts um, in a few minutes to be a blessing, uh, as we do our tithes and our offering, as the Lord laid on your heart, you know what the Scripture says. You're not going to beat God's giving. And when you give to the, uh, the prophet, also God says that you shall receive a reward equal or even greater than that which you have sown. Amen? God bless you so much. Give God an awesome hand of praise. Again, I was saying third Sunday, uh, we are going with Pastor Taylor. Pastor Taylor is one of those pastors way back 35 years ago when we were getting started. Right a little after that, uh, he got involved with our ministry. And uh, down through the years, I, you know, we, a lot of fellowship have fallen to the wayside, but not his. Amen. And so let's look forward to going and traveling with us next on third Sunday, the Winter Garden. Have a great fellowship. They always we always dine together before the message, and we always just have good fellowship, laughter, meet some people. Uh, that's family. We call them family up there. Amen. All right. To God be the praise and glory. I'm gonna have the uh, choir come back and bless us with a song. Then we're gonna get our hearts and mind ready to sow our seed in great ground. Amen. God bless. Come on, y'all can put your hands together with us this morning, just for a little bit.
stepped in the water. I stepped in the water. I stepped in the water. The water was cold. Till my body, but not my soul. If you don't believe that I've been redeemed, follow me down to the Jordan stream. Jordan River, chilly and cold. Chill my body, but never my soul. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch, a wretch like me. See, my soul was sinking deep in sin. From that peaceful shore, seeking, seeking, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, but the master of the sea heard my cry and delivered me. There is no problem. Too hard for God. There is no problem too big for God. There is no problem too hard for God. Just hold on and never doubt. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him bring you out. Well, I came to tell you. To tell you, I came to tell you, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, and be baptized. in the water and the water was cold chill my body but never my soul if you don't believe I've been redeemed follow me down to the Jordan stream well, Jordan River chilly and cold chill my body but never my soul Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a little red, a red like me. I once was lost, I once was lost. Anybody ever been lost? Anybody ever been lost? Well, I came to tell you, I came to tell you. To tell somebody, he said, he said, be
Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, got it? All right. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I like that song. Come on, give God a praise for it. Amen. Amen. I came to tell you what Jesus said. Amen. No more, no less. Not what I have to say. Not what somebody else had to say. But I came to tell you what Jesus said. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's get our hearts and minds ready. Amen. To plant our seed in great ground. Amen. Amen. And in, in everything God created, he put a seed in it. Look around. That's why you see things continue to live and multiply. Everything God made, he said, and in its kind is a seed. Amen. That's why the birds keep hanging around. That's why the fish in the water. That's why human beings keep popping up. That's a seed in everything God made. Hallelujah. And when it comes to your money, God put a seed in your money. Hallelujah. And if you want your money to hang around, and then you want your money to be blessed and multiply, then you have to take that seed. And as I say, you can't, don't wear it, don't eat it, don't go on vacation with it. Hallelujah. Take that seed and give it back to God. Okay, okay. I got about 25 of y'all that agreed with that. But I'm going to say it again, make sure I got those 25 with me again. Take that seed and give it back to God. How many of you have seen God bless your seed? Come on, stand for me. Just stand for a minute. If God have blessed your seed, stand to give him the highest praise. Hallelujah, God. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God and Savior. Amen. So our tithing pledges come on the screen. If you desire a pastor, bless, envelope, lift your hand, the usher. We'll give you one. Uh, just lift your hand high and you can receive one. Amen. All right. Y'all ready? You know, the first two letters in there describe God. God is the I am. Amen, somebody. And so we're declaring we are children of the living God just like he is, we are. Amen. All right, y'all ready? I am a tither, and I support the kingdom of God on this earth. I believe that the Paul P. Christian Life Center doing kingdom business, and therefore I plant my seed in great ground that will bring forth prosperity in every area of my life. I have no time for doubt or doubters. I am taught to obey the word of God so that the blessing of Christ shall overtake me, and the favor of God shall find me and my cup shall run over. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's seed time. Amen, amen, amen.
Stretch your hands towards your seat. Father, we thank you because your word declared that you give seed to the sower. As we sow into your kingdom, Father God, let there be a great harvest for those who have planted seed, Father God. Continue to do what only you can do, Father God, and let this go forward to build our kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. so powerful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every time I just think about God's word, it's nothing like it. Amen. And I just read this note and I want to uh, have us lift up. Um, um, well, when I system one of our dear uh, members, she hadn't been here in a long time because of her health, had transitioned as Sister uh, Mitchell, uh, Sister Smith, who's back there, and we have quite a few family members. I know uh, Brother Andre Smith and his father, and quite a few other members, and uh, we want to lift the family up in prayer, and we thank God for her life. We thank God for her legacy, and we thank God that she trusted God and she's in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Uh, the Bible is true. When we, are, when we as believers are absent from this body, we're present with the Lord. And so we will keep the family lifted up, and we'll give you more details as the week go by. Amen? Amen. All right, let's get our hearts and our minds ready uh, to just be blessed by the ministry of music. Music is a ministry. And it is that which usher in the presence of God close to us and we come closer to God by singing to him. And what a blessing to be able to come together with one purpose in mind, to glorify God. Amen? Amen. All right, God bless you. said earlier in praise and worship, we're setting the tone. This is our first Sunday in 2024, and we're setting the tone for a relentless worship, a praise like never before. So whatever notification is on, I need you to turn it on and off so we can align ourselves with the word that's about to come. Amen? Amen. He's about to feed us with God's word. We're lifting up our pastor as he brings forth the word, because sometimes we may say, ouch, and amen. Amen. But it's for protection. Amen. His correction is for our protection. God, so God, as we sit here, we sit in the seat of your spirit, oh God. We ask you to take over. So right now, as you're sitting here, set the atmosphere in your row. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Push past whatever that hurt is right now. Worship him. Come on, I hear you out there. Worship him. Glory to God. Set an atmosphere for the word to come forth. Our first Sunday in 2012, Jesus, in 2024. The next 51 Sundays, God, have your way. Miracle signs and wonders flow over, flow, overflow. God, have your way. Have your way, oh God. Let the residue of the worship and the, the residue of the word, let the engrafted word, let us take it out, oh God, into the four corners of the earth, oh God, and share it with somebody. Sharing the good news of who you are, oh God. And we say praise you. Worshippers, where are you? Intercessors, where are you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I hear you. Hallelujah. Word, word. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Holy is the Lamb. Before a battle, 
God would send out the worshipers. They would send out the worshipers before a battle, an actual physical battle. It confuses the enemy. It sets an atmosphere. It says, for God I live and for God I'll die. So we're going into battle, whatever it is, oh God. We, we're setting it forth with worship. He will send drum majors out in a, in a physical battle to confuse the enemy and set the atmosphere amongst the soldiers, amen? And the Levites and the priests will go out and set an atmosphere because they knew bloodshed was coming. But we thank God the ultimate bloodshed was already done for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody said they hung them high. Hey, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. They stretched them wide. Hey, Jesus. He hung his head. And for me now. If you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. If you pour out your spirit, I will open up the sign. If you provide the fire, say it. I'll provide the sound. If you pour out your spirit, I will open up the side and feel. If you provide the see, I'll provide the sacrifice. If you pour out your spirit, I will open up the side. We're gonna say it again. If you provide, if you provide. If you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. This life is a sacrifice. Say it again. If you pour out the spirit, I will open up the side and If it's bitterness, it gotta go. Say it again. Fill me up. Say, fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. If you provide the. Say, I'll provide the sacrifice. Worshippers, worshippers, intercessors, worshippers. Before the word about to come, you What are you gonna do? Bone before him. Be naked before him. God, here I am. Without one plea. Say it again. If you provide, if you provide. Come on and say it. Say, I provide. Because they tested God. They didn't believe in what God could do on that wood. And if you pour out your spirit, I'm 
become a living witness. Say, I will always Try God and see. If you provide, if you provide, say, if you And they wet that wood. They soaked that wood. They soaked that wood. And with everything in them, they believed in what God was going to do. If you pour out. Fill me up, say, and fill Say, fill me up. All over the room, say it. Until I One more time, all over the room. Feel me. I want to run. I want to run. Come on, somebody. Whatever it is, give it up. 
over to him. Give it over to him. say this before I come down about the overflow. David said in the 23rd Psalm, Lord, my cup runs over. Come on. David said, my cup runs over. A good thing about the overflow is that you have so much that somebody got to come and get look somebody got to get some of the overflow look at somebody say I just I, I, I don't want just enough I want to be so blessed that I can be a blessing I want the overflow come on give God a shout praise I want the overflow I want to be a blessing I want the overflow Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Let us. My, my pastor, and so we can all just get ready for the word he used to say, it's hard to stop a moving train that a train just can't come to a quick, abrupt stop. It got to gradually stop. And so, since, so we can go on to the next 
uh, Levelton's this morning. We're going to stop this train by giving God one big shout, one more shout. One loud praise. Come on, Shabbat the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. What the mighty God we serve. Let us go to the Word of God today. Turn to the book of James. And uh, I want to go right back to something God began to share. We're talking about, we're starting with the, if we're starting with the uh, theme for, did you put some bottom, please? Uh, we're starting with some theme, the theme this year about speaking God's Word. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. And so in James chapter uh, 1, it, uh, that's all it talks about, the Word. Amen. And it says in verse 16, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift come from above and coming down from the Father of lights which, with, with, with whom there is no reverendness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will, I love this verse, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be the be a kind of first fruit of his creation creature creator of his <laughs> creature he's man wherefore my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak slow to wrath for the wrath of god worketh not the righteousness of man wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's go back to that verse. Verse 18. Hallelujah. Verse 18 says, that Christ Jesus, look how he, look, look how the Bible says, uh, I'll just look, look how the Bible says that he uh, redeemed us and brought us into the body of Christ. He said, it was with the word of what? Listen how God, the reason all of us sitting here that are born again today, the reason we know Christ and that he lives inside of us, the word of God drew us. Okay, don't take that lightly, what I just said. It was God's word, the word of truth, that changed our lives. How many of you tried other things? How many thought that other things would suffice? And then after a while dealing with things that we thought was good enough to draw us and keep us, keep us with joy and peace, we found out that if you don't, if God's word didn't draw you, whatever drew you can't keep you. The word, the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Is all his creation need to have a joyful life, to have peace, and have direction, love, and fulfilling your purpose for which you was born. Everything is the word of the living God. So the Bible said that God begot us with the word. We're living in times now where people really think that they're going to take more, that it takes more than the Word of God. I don't know what makes us think that God's Word by itself is not enough. You know, it's, we, we don't got to the point where we feel like the Word, the, you got to do something else. Got to add something else. Got to put this in and put that in because the word alone is not enough. Let me tell you, the word by itself 
if it doesn't draw you, and if you don't come through the word and it doesn't draw you, you don't have power, sustaining power to go through life. Amen. Amen. You don't have what it takes when the storms of life come. God's word is sharper than any two edged sword. God's word is built on foundation and truth. The only thing the devil really fears is the word of God. And he fears the person that knows the word of God and also will do the word, what the words say. The devil is afraid of someone that is a doer of the word. He's not afraid of you if you just come to church. That don't put any fear in him. But if he find out that you and your family is a word person and y'all activate the word, the devil is afraid of you. He will try to shut you up. Make sure that what you have found, you just keep it between you and your family. He don't want you talking about how powerful the word of God is. How he gets you. He don't want you talking about how he got you through life storms. Amen. So the Bible said that this is how he got, in the, how he got us. If the word don't draw you again, you've been drawn the wrong way. We live in a time where people also don't want to hear the word. You know, that was a time when people came to church, they really wanted to hear the word. Amen. Now we want to hear something to make us feel good. The word of God is not to make you feel good. The word of God is to make you good. There'll be a lot of times you don't feel good, but you will be good. In other words, you'll be, God were to get you through your feeling when you're feeling down. Amen. The word, it is the living word. It is the power of God. It is everything that God is. The Bible said in the beginning was the word, in the beginning. Really, the word was before the beginning. It wouldn't be no beginning if it wasn't for the Word. In the beginning, the Bible say God was there. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. Then he said that anything that was made was made by, come on church, made by the Word. And without the Word, nothing was made. Then he said the Word put on flesh. Good God about it. The Word came to rescue us. The Word had to come in our environment. The Word had to come in our sinful state, in our sinful Word. The Word came down. Look what the Bible says. Don't error, my beloved brother. Watch what he says. In verse, put that verse back up. Uh, every, verse 17, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. It came down from the Father. In other words, uh, the Word came down. And it came down from the Father. We got to get back to applying the Word of God to our lives. I know we live in a, uh, 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 secular social media time. But God's word is still good. It's still the foundation. As a matter of fact, the apostle Paul says you can't lay another foundation. As a matter of fact, put that on the screen. I want you to put that up there for me. Put up 1 Corinthians 3 and 17. 1 Corinthians 3 and 17. And listen to what the apostle Paul says about the foundation. Jesus Christ is the foundation. He says, if any man defile the temple, no, Amen. That's what God, amen, hallelujah. That's what I want. 311. Amen. Don't you, what I said. Well, put 11. 
all right? For other foundation, know what he's saying? No other foundation, no other, say it with me, no other, no other. Foundation, foundation can a man lay, can a man lay. Hallelujah. hallelujah, then that is laid, which is the Word of God. Listen, so what God is saying, the foundation to your joy is Christ. Now, if you want to try to lay off another foundation built on some other uh, thing, it's going to fall apart. Somebody said, if I get enough money, that's a good foundation. That foundation will fall apart. Just like you got it, you can lose it. Amen. Somebody said, well, if I find the right person to marry, well, that foundation, your marriage needs to be built on the foundation called Jesus. You can't lay another foundation. Your business is not a foundation. Your relationship is not a foundation. You are not a foundation. Our education is not a foundation. If you're going to build a foundation, you start with Jesus. So when the storm of life come and the wind begin to blow and you don't know which way to turn, you are standing on a solid rock. Jesus talks about the man who built their houses on sand. He said, the man built the house on sand, he built it real quick, but the storm came. He said, but another man built his house on a rock. That he was talking about the word. He said, but when the storm came, that house stood. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hand and say, I want to make it through the storms. Hallelujah, somebody. So Jesus says, he said, look, he says, he says in verse 8, uh, go back to 17, uh, verse 18, he says, of, of his truth will he begot us, he got us with the word of God, that we should be a kind of the first fruit of his creator, of the creator. Christ Jesus, uh, word is the foundation. The word will draw us. The word will mature us. It's going to take the word to what? Say it, church, mature us. It's going to take the word to build our family. It's going to take the word for our finances. It's going to take the word for our physical and mental, mental well-being. The word is going to be our joy, peace, and love. Amen. Now, I said a lot there, but let me tell you, if you're going to mentally and emotionally make it, you're going to always have to go back to the word. Our mental and emotional being state of mind is so important. There's some time, that time going to be time in our life, you look around and you say, you know what, I got everything I need. Finally, God, I got all the things I wanted in the natural world. And yet the devil will rob you of your peace. It doesn't matter if we have everything in the world and don't have, and don't have peace with it. So, amen. So now listen, where do peace come from? Peace come from not the things. Peace come from God. He is the Prince of Peace. You can have very little, nothing, and have peace. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's God's word, and and, and we're moving. It seems like we're trying to build the church now on our gifts. We're trying to build people up on our talents. We're thinking if we can be gifted enough, charismatic enough, we can go away from the Word and just talk about stuff. I call it the, and I know everybody, beauty shop and barber shop is not like that, like what I'm about to say. I call it beauty shop talk and barber shop talk. When you get in there, a lot of those places, they talk about a lot of good stuff. And they gossip about a lot of stuff. Amen. Not all of them, I know. That way you go to find out the daily news. <laughs> when you come to church, you need the Word. Why do you need the Word? Because our children 
are dealing with things that we've never seen before in our lives. And they want to go into areas that are very dangerous, areas that will just change their whole viewpoint of the Word and God, give them a whole different culture away from what God's Word says, take them into another purpose. And if the families, if, if the parents don't have a word to stand on, when your children are confused, you just can't have barbershop talk and beauty shop talk when they get confused. You got to lead them back to the word. If you can't lead them back to the word, then you're not leading them back to the foundation. They're going to continue to be confused because, again, with our social media and with this new, wa this new wave of livelihood and whatever we want to do, and we're moving away from the Word. Most times you come to church, people just trying to be, a lot of pastors just, they are so concerned about their message. They are trying to be careful not to hurt no one's feelings. And the reason they want to hurt people feeling, they feel like you might leave the church and your feeling get hurt. And then, the, you know, the money walks out with you. <laughs> and so they are careful not to hurt people feeling. So if the word is going to offend some people, some people say, well, I'm not going to preach the word because people are going to leave. Well, they left Jesus. <laughs> they did. They walked away from Jesus because he spoke the word. He spoke the word. You know, Jesus had gave, given them what they wanted. They were hungry, right? What did Jesus do? He fed them. And then they found Jesus the next day, and they wanted some more food. And Jesus said, you laboring for the meat that perish. He said, now, if you really want to eat, eat my flesh and drink my blood, and all Jesus was saying, I want to be my blood to cover you. I want you to be part of my body by eating my flesh. That's communion. We're going to take that at the end of service today. Jesus was saying, blood, which wash away your sin. The bread represents you in my body, and I'm in yours. They couldn't understand it. And because they couldn't understand it, they walked away from the word. And Jesus didn't run behind them. Now listen very carefully. Jesus didn't run behind them. People say, please come back. I'll never preach that sermon again. He didn't say that to them. Y'all just stay in my church, and I'll never offend you again. Jesus didn't chase them. Because Jesus realized that those who have ears to hear is going to hear the word. And if the word step on your toes, you got to learn how to be able to take it. The Bible said the word is like a mirror. You look into it, and if, you're, if the mirror is showing that you're wrong, don't break the mirror. <laughs> Straighten up. When we look into the mirror of God's word, sometimes the word of God shows us just how wrong we are. Don't close, the, don't close the Bible because you don't like what it said. Because the word of truth is going to make you, see, you'll know the truth, and once you know the truth, it'll make you free. But the truth sometimes hurt before it make you free. Nobody likes to be corrected. We are, human, human beings don't like to be corrected. Please listen. I, I've never, you can't correct one-year-olds without them having an attitude. Now, you know, grown people, every time you correct us, we're going to, yeah, but. Most times when the Word of God comes, listen, you got to love God's Word. All of God's Word. Not just the part that make you feel good. All of God's Word. You got to love God's Word. It's given for doctrine, for correction. So sometimes when people read the Word of God, they get mad at the messenger too. Amen. Amen. I heard someone say something in it, it a pastor. He's one of these pop, popular pastors. He's popular, but he's showing sure right. And uh, 
made a statement that kind of, I said, Lord, you need to just stop preaching. Just stop preaching. He said, this is what he said. He said, now, I know what God's word say about relationship and, and uh, what ought to be, how we ought to live and how, what our relationship be, uh, should be. I know what God said about man with man, woman with woman, woman should be with man, man should be. He said, I know all that. I know about sin. God's word tells him when we sin. He said, and then he still said, and God's word is right too. I said, oh, the brother finna talk. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> then he said, but it's not my responsibility. to tell you how to live. Well, it's not my responsibility to make you do or force you to do anything, but it is my responsibility to preach the Word. Yeah. Now, you live any way you want to. You get mad and decide to go find your place. We don't have members do that. I preach certain message, they like, I ain't coming back. And they go run around Winter Haven, Lakeland, Kissimmee, and about a year or two later, they come right back in here. Yeah. Hey, Amen, somebody. Amen. You ran everywhere trying to find somebody to tickle your toes. Yeah. You ran away from the Word. Then you found out your life is a mess, yeah. and you confused and have no joy and peace, and now you realize, I came right from the Word. The Word is life. Yeah. Amen. The word, the, so God's word, so the person says, I can't, it's not my job. That, that would be like a policeman saying, well, I know it's safe 25 miles per hour in this neighborhood, but it's not my responsibility to tell you how fast to drive. <laughs> it is his responsibility. Hallelujah, somebody. So God's word has been given to us for our families. Now, this is what I pray. I pray this. I pray that parents get some backbone. I do. I, and grandparents. We, we, we compromise way too much with our children and grandchildren. We, we, we don't got too understanding. I mean, them, our children bring us anything, and we say, well, baby, I understand. What do you, you can't understand sin. You can't understand something opposite of the word and say you're a good parent. Let your children be mad at you. Look, about, about 50 of y'all like, I don't know. I will say it again. Let your children be mad at you. You need to stand in righteousness. You need, as a parent and grandparent, your responsibility is stand on what God say. Let them be mad at you for being right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. It is far better for your children to be mad at you because you stood on the word tell you I'm leaving this house, I'm never coming back, don't talk to me no more, just stay with God's Word. I promise you your children will find the hall pen. They're going to find that place where they rely mama was right, daddy was right, granddaddy was right, Jesus was right, the Word was right. Hallelujah. I need somebody to know what I'm talking about. You ran away from God's Word. You were so big, bad, and grown, you went and done your thing. But after a while, that word brought you back. Yeah. It's time for, you know, we, we, we try to blame everything on society now. We think, we tell our, we say, well, my child picked that up in school. They probably did. They picked that, that, way of living up in school. They picked up that, those habits up in school. They got with the wrong group of people. They probably did in school. Yeah. You know, they probably did. Because they did take, like we said, they took prayer out of school. 
to the Word, can't say nothing about God's Word. So they might have picked up in school, but they should have picked up the Bible way before they went to school. They should have picked up the Word before they went into school. So when they ran up against the wiles of the devil, they could have said, yeah, but God says. Do you know what it, do you know how hard our children work now to fit in? Their biggest thing is they don't want to seem like they are outcasts or back in our day we call it they are square. I don't know what they call it now. They're not with the in crowd. So they work hard just to fit in, even when their spirit are telling them this is not the word. But they have peers. They have a culture out there that says that, you know, that's old. You know, and I, I said this Wednesday, I want to say it again today. You know, the church very rarely, and I'm good with this. I'm not, this is not a big deal. Very rarely do you hear the old hymns. You know them hymns that used to, people used to sing along and it was rooted somewhere. You don't hear that no more like you used to in the church. That's fine. I ain't no big deal with the, the hymns. The hymns were songs. You know, they was, they was a song some of us grew up on, but that is not a big deal to me because they was, that was music written. So what the, the, the church is saying these days, a lot of the churches say, we don't sing them old hymns no more. Like we back in slavery and stuff. Man, they, they weren't about that. So now, that's fine, you got rid of the hymns. But the word is not old. Now you can, you can go and sing your song, but you better have some word in your church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So God says, I want you to put this verse up with me. Look what God says. One more verse. And God says to us, he says, and uh, what, what, look at verse 20. Put up verse 20. Now here's the word for you today. I'm not going to hold you much longer unless the Holy Ghost say keep going. Now look at verse 20. He says, matter of fact, let's do verse 19 first. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. All right, now watch it. And what? Slow to speak. And slow to get angry. All right, watch this. Now, the only way you can be slow uh, to speak and slow to get angry, you got to have some word in you. Everybody lean this way. Now look this way. You can't hold your tongue just because you want to hold your tongue. You know, here, here's, what a, here's what a lot of Christians say. I'm trying not to tell you all. I'm trying. I'm talking about Christians. I'm trying to be nice. When you hear a Christian saying I'm trying, they don't have a lot of word in them. Because when you got the Word of God in you, yeah. what's in you is going to come out. So, see, God didn't call us to try to be nice. That's hard. You're going around the house, I'm trying to be a good, good wife. I'm trying to cook, if that's what you do. I'm trying to wash. I'm trying to be patient. I'm trying, I'm trying. You going you, that trying gonna wear out after a while because that's your human effort. You gotta have some word in you. Amen. You ain't trying. The word is holding your tongue. Amen. The word got you doing what you don't want to do. Amen. The word has you being nice when you want to be mean. The word have, have you saying the right thing when you want to say the wrong thing. It's the word down on the inside of you that's holding your soul and holding your tongue, and you don't have to just try to be. I know I'm preaching to somebody in here. I'm going to say somebody marriage today. 
by the way of, by the word. Quit trying to be. Be it. You can't be it unless the word in you. Don't just be in the church. Let the word be in you. Then he said, for the wrath, put up verse 20 in now, put a verse, for the wrath of God, for the wrath of man, the anger, when man get angry, I'm about to close here, for when man get angry, look at verse 20, for the, when man get angry, he never worked the righteousness of God. Well, well, what he said, he said, when you and, see, we said, I want to speak God's word. Anger have never le led to blessings. When you angry, it never leads you to God's word. When you angry, it never leads you to do what's right. Amen, somebody. Anger, anger is an emotion that all of us carry. But the emotion of anger shouldn't carry us. That's why the Bible says, be ye angry, but sin not. When we're angry, you never going to do what's right. What got to happen? Anger got to come, which is natural, and the word got to rise. Oh, let me get over here. When anger comes, the word over, over, ought to override anger. You got to have it in you. Glory be the God. Somebody say, in you. Deep down inside of you. When I was a little boy. How many of y'all know about them things they call them? I don't know what, everybody got a different name, but there's a bug that fly around. I call it, we call it a lightning, down here, lightning bug, lightning bug. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. At night, that, it'll light up. Boy, when I was a little boy, I couldn't understand. I said, Lord, how can you, how can a bug, how can a bug bring light? I mean, that, that, that just messed with my imagination and curiosity was up, so I was going to find out. So I caught me in one of those lightning bugs, and I put some pressure on it by stepping on it. And when I put pressure on the bug, what was in it got on my shoe. And my shoe had the light on it. What was in it came out of it under pressure. And it got on me. If the word, see, we can always know what's in us when pressure comes. Hallelujah. When pressure comes, is the word in you, the word coming out. Amen, somebody. Glory be the God. Give God one more shout praise for his word. Let me say this in close. I far rather for anybody to come back to me and, I, you know, and I go back to our children or whoever, I'd rather for my child to say, I don't like, I disagree with what you said, the word. I'd rather for them to leave upset because I stood on God's word than to compromise with them, let them go out in the world and find out that my compromise and cause them trouble. And then come back in my face as my children, our children, and say, you are the reason I went down the wrong road. Yes, and then I turn around and say, well, I was just trying to give you what you want. I don't want them telling me, but if you knew what was right, yeah. why didn't you stand on what was right? Amen. I promise your children will sooner or later come back to you and say, they'll write you a letter or make, give you a phone call sooner or later and say, ooh, I thank you that you wouldn't compromise with me. Amen. They may be 40 years old before they say it, Amen. but they're going to call you back and say, ooh, I didn't understand then, but I'm so glad you didn't compromise with me. You stayed with the word. Hallelujah. I love the word. Anybody love the word in here today? It is because of God's word 
that we are standing here today and sitting here. It was God's word that laid us down last night. It was God's word that washed over as we slumbered and slept last night. It was God's word that shook us early this morning, woke us up out of our sleep and gave us a brand new day. It's God's word that can have the blood running warm in our vein right now. It's God's word that got our heart beating on time right now. It's God's word that we have eyes to see, ears to hear, hands to clap. It's God's word right now that we have a voice to say hallelujah. It's God's word that in our beings, and some ought to give him a shout praise. Hallelujah. There is power in the word. We're talking about the power of God's word. See, God says, watch this as a close. God said, when he speaks, everyone leaning this way. God said, when he speaks, God said, when, God said, when I speak, my word never come back to me void. God said, my word always bring back to me that which I have spoken. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then God said, I'm going to make you like me. I'm going to make you in my image after my likeness. God said, as I speak the word and the words are spirit, so when you open up your mouth, your words are spirit. I, look, we're just not natural beings. Our word carry power. If you think what you say don't have power, you, that's why you're in the condition you're in. Your word has power, and your word carries responsibility. Your, when we speak something, our word don't know the difference. If you say something and you don't really mean it, the word says, but you spoke it. If you say, all I ever do is, 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 is nothing but bad things always happen to me, the word says, what you say? Nothing good ever happened to me. And the word said, what you say? The word, your word just said, you just sent me on an assignment to go find something bad for you. I got to go find something nothing, that's not good because that's all you talk about, bad things and not good. Everybody I run into, nobody treatment right. Every man is a, amen. All I draw is no good at men. Y'all know what y'all say. I'm going to say it. All, all I draw is dogs to me. Well, you sent out a dog message. The word got to go find you a dog. You should have said something good is coming my way. Somebody that loved God. Somebody that worship God. And your word would have said, let me go find that person for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to never pay these bills. I'm always in debt. Where is it? Let me go find you some more debt. You ought to say, I'm a lender and not a borrower. I'm the head and not the tail. Go find me out what I want. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Go find me some blessing. Hallelujah. I'm blessed from the top of my head down to the sole of my feet. Open up your mouth. Say what you want according to God's word. Somebody shout, I'm blessed up in here. Somebody shout, my children blessed. And blessed coming their way. Hallelujah. Devil, get your hand off our seed. My children shall walk, my children shall walk in prosperity. They shall serve the Lord. They shall walk in righteousness. Somebody open up your mouth and speak God's word. I'm sick of my spouse. They just need to get it right. Why don't you say, my spouse done got it right? The word go around and work on their mind, and the word work on their heart, and the word will work on their soul, and something will shift. Hallelujah. 
Let me speak a word over this church. This is a word church. And the devil in hell will never have his way in here. Holy, I come against all principality, all power, all wickedness. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ that we will walk in the power. We will walk in the authority of God's word. This is not a playground. This is not an amusement park. This is not a nightclub. This is a word church. I wish I had somebody. This is a word, word church. This is a place where lives are changed. This is a place where Jesus reigns. This is a place where the king is king. Hallelujah. Glory up in here. Glory, God. If you don't like the word, that means you don't like the Lord. Hallelujah. El Shaddai. Jehovah Jireh. Yeshua HaMashiach. Move God. Move in our homes. Move in our church. Move in our choir. Move in our usher board. Move with the deacon. Move with the minister. Move God. Power. I said God words. God words. Hallelujah. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor. Sometimes you got to say ouch. But God's word is still powerful. Hallelujah. That's healing power. Saving power. Do right power. Sanctify power. Power. Somebody give my God a shout praise. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hey! 2,000 years ago, they took the word of God. They stretched him wide. They hung him high. They buried him. But on the third day morning, the word got up. Hallelujah, somebody. The word got up. All power. All power. Hallelujah. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, everything going to be all right. Stick with the word. Stick with the word. Stick with the word. Stick with the word. Stay with the word. Hey. Hallelujah. Power! God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Give God a Shabbat praise. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Anybody mind made up? Anybody hard fixed? Everybody going to run on and see what they ain't going to be. Give me a shout play. Hey. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, bless you. Hey. Glory to God. Come on.
When I think about Jesus, what he done for me. When I think about Jesus, how he set me free. I can dance, 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 dance,
heaven and earth going to pass away. God said, but my word shall never pass away. It was good for a grandmama. It was good for granddaddy. It was good for our parents. It good for us. It good for our children. It good for our grandchildren. Hallelujah. The word of God shall never lose its power. Whenever you want to do better, be better, you'll find it in the Word. Hallelujah. I love how they were singing in the end about that war cry. And um, every good football team have a war cry. Every good uh, tribe have a war cry. And God's children have a war cry. Where's the war? Our war cry is based on praise. What was the purpose of a war cry? To let the enemy know you're coming. <laughs> Amen, somebody. So when you hear a war cry of praise, it let the devil know my mind made up. I'm coming into your territory. And that which belongs to me, I'm taking it back. Amen. We've been so blessed today. I hope you heard God's word because our young people are really struggling with, our, with their identities, self-esteem, self-worth, purpose, and the devil got us turning away from the word. Now we got to get back to the word and let them know this where mom, this where mom, this where mom stand. This where dad stand. We stand with the word. We're not standing with culture. We're not standing with this new movement. We're standing with what we know will bless you. God's word. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord can't help but love you. You got us with the word. And you can keep us with the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're about to give you the opportunity to come and give your life to Christ. Or the opportunity to come and become a member of the church if you already have given your life to Christ. Let us stand. If you say this is my day to come forth, don't let nothing stop you. Just leave those that chair you've been sitting in. Come, let me lay my hands on you and pray with you. If you need to confess Christ, come and say, I'm, I want Jesus. I need him. I need him. I need his word. I need God's. Come on, God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. Who's, who's going to follow her this day? I believe that somebody else. God's pulling on you. God is pulling on you. God's pulling on you today. Won't you be bold and say, here I am. Don't hesitate. Come and walk in your blessing. This your day to come forth that your life may be changed by the power of God. Mm, there be any others. You coming for salvation? You coming for membership? You already a child of God. You just want to be a part of this church family. We openly receive you with great joy. Yes, Lord. I do believe somebody else. I, I believe God is pulling on somebody else today. You just gotta be bold enough to say, I'm, I'm walking down there. Your life is gonna change when you make your mind up. Come on, woman of God. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
this your day. Transition and change is about to happen. Transition and change is about to happen. If there be any other, I want to be very patient as you are hearing God's voice for yourself. If there be any other, wherever you're standing, be bold in the name of Jesus. Come and get what God has for you. You may be seated now in, the, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Sister, Sister Harrington. Glad to have y'all. Christian experience. Amen, Sister Payton. And Sister Lisa Stevens, Christian experience. God bless you. Sister Payton and Sister Stevens. I'm glad that the Holy Spirit draws you today. Both of you. You move because God say move. And that's the best time to move when you hear the voice of God because he has the next step for you. Amen. We're glad to have you. I give you the right hand of fellowship, making you a full covenant member today. Same here. God bless you. Make full covenant uh, member today. Amen. All right. Love, uh, before I let you guys go up this way, either of you want to say anything? You can, by all means, if you desire to. Say what's on your mind. Amen. Say it. And then at the end, when the praise team came up, I just felt like I was back home in New Jersey. Mm. And God is saying, This is your New Jersey. You're in Florida now. So you have your place right here. So I am just so glad, glad to have you. Amen. I'm so glad. glad to have you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So God bless you. Did you want to say anything? Okay. God bless you. And she says, well, hmm. And I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, I've been going there. I've been going there. I say, uh, my children are crazy about, about, about that church. And she told me she had some children. I said, well, I understand you work with stuff. I said, I'm a child. I said, but uh, let's get, I, let me get your phone number. I said, because I'll pick up your kids for you and bring them to the church with me. And so she said, okay. She said, well, I'm going to, and she might be here today. But anyway, she said, I'm going to a divorce. And she said, I haven't been coming. She said, because, but I've been looking at it on the TV. I said, girl, I said, you come on and come to church Sunday. I said, because I'm going to come to church Sunday. And I'm just so, I'm so excited. I love you. And I know you love me because that's all I have to do. Amen. 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 Glory be the God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey, go ahead and give it praise. Glory. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. That's all right. You don't have no apology. She said she didn't mean to shout and dance. No apology. Shout, dance, give God glory, give God the praise. He is a mighty good God. He's worth praising. Amen, amen. There's a, there's a word, church, but we dance too now. And we know why we dance. Amen. God bless y'all so much. I'm going to ask that you guys go that direction, and they're going to take excellent care of you. Amen. Give God praise for two more family members in the local church. Amen. All right, we're going to prepare our hearts and our minds. Amen. This is a young man, 
I think he, hey, come on. Oh. You coming to join? Okay. Hey, Amen. Have you get, you been baptized? In? No. I'm never had, never had God to save you? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. I'm going to lead you through the center prayer. Repeat on me. Say, Father God. Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I come today. I confess my sins. I, confess my sins. I, believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died for me. Died. He rose the third day, rose the third day. And, I and I accept his death, burial, burial and, resurrection. and resurrection. I am, I am a, child a child of the living God, of the living God. right now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen, yeah. All right. That, that, <laughs> That young fella, that got an anointing on him. God going to use him. He got up New Year night, and when he got through, I'm almost not preach. <laughs> Listen, we're going into 2024, and um, our theme is that we are going to, what? Speak life. The power of the tongue. Speak life. How are you going to speak life? You got to speak the word. Amen. So to God be all the praise and glory. You know, I want, I'll share it. You know, sometimes, you know, God has blessed this ministry, you know, this morning probably five or six hundred people was in here. Listen, and that is a lot of people worshiping. And every now and then some of my parishional friend, pastor friends said, Pastor, how do you keep people coming? I said, I don't, I just preach the word. I said, I don't have all them bells and whistles. I said, I said Winston, I, I, now let me say this, I'm done. I said, Winston, I have been approached by some people who want me to be a little more dramatic. Not in my preaching, but on, up there. Now, you know those flashing lights and the smoke that come up? I said, Jesus never walked around with smoke behind him. And he had a multitude of people because he preached the word. I don't like smoke. I like to see what people are doing. I, I want to, to God be the glory. All right, it's time for our communion. Give God praise for his body, his blood. All right, if you don't have a communion cup, uh, I want you to Hey, uh, uh, be sure to get one. Lift your hand. The deacon will bring you a communion cup. Lift it high so they can see you. Hey, deacon, I'll get all this for you. Be sure to lift your hand high. Hallelujah. How many of y'all been blessed already today? Uh, everyone sit. Let me have all of our, all of our teenagers uh, from, if, I know we got some in the back. Everyone from basically 12 to 19, if you're in here, stand with me. Stand 12 to 19. Everybody just sit down. I just want the 12 to 19. 12 to 19. I know some of y'all want to stand, but y'all are. Y'all are. Now look, y'all, all the adults look around at all these young people in here. And give God a praise for them. Amen. Love on them. Don't compromise with the word. Listen to them and use the word to help them get through their storms. Don't beat up on them. Use the word. Amen. And let the word guide you and you'll look back when you, over your life and say, wow, look what the word have done with my child. Amen. Give God a hand for them. Amen. All right. I want to say also to our young people, let me give you a little, everyone that want to stand, you can stand as we prepare. Let me give you a little of your passive personality. Sometimes y'all don't think we ever was teenager, but we was one time. <laughs> let me give y'all, I want all the, our young people to listen to your pastor today. When I was a teenager, other teenagers couldn't influence me to do something that I didn't want to do. 
I didn't care what they thought about me. If I don't want to do it, you don't have to like me. I don't have to do this so you can think I'm approved by you. Who are you to approve me? Another teenager think they have some approval right. Like, what in the world are you? Who are you? I ain't going to do it. Don't want to do it. Go have fun if you want to do it. Be safe. Amen. So I want y'all to learn to let your, yay be, your yes be yes and let your no be no. And if, if they don't like it, let them go about their business. Amen. Stick with the word. God knows what's best for you. They don't. I said earlier in the message that Jesus took the bread and this when they walked away from him because they didn't understand the word. He said, y'all, y'all keep, Jesus said, you keep coming for natural food. He said, but you need to eat my flesh. And he was talking about this here. What had just happened? That bread now is in us, right? It's part of us, right? And we're part of it, right? Jesus, that's what I want. I want you to be part of me. And I want to be a part of you. I want to be in you. And I want you to be in me. So symbolically, he took the bread and said, that this is my body. Then he took the cup and he said, I'm going to redeem you with my blood. Wash your sin away. He said, this cup represents the blood of the New Testament and that which I will redeem and forgive you of your sin. When you drink it, drink ye all of it. And he said that often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord death until he come. Amen. And he's coming back again. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, we've been out of Bible study for two weeks. Two Mondays, so we start back tomorrow, amen? amen. 7 30. And uh, those at Sola Vita will be there at 5 o'clock, amen. All right, if you're with us for the very first time, let me see your hand. Anybody, God bless you, woman of God. Anybody else over here, first time? God bless you. Where else? Back here. All right, everybody that with us for the first time, come down here. Let me quickly pray with you. I want to. Uh, get to know your, na- uh, your name and pray with you right quickly. Amen. Give them a hand as they're coming. Come on down on your first time. Give, give me an opportunity to pray with you and to get to know your name. What a blessing. Bless you so much for being here today. This has been a blessed day. Amen. Anyone else? All right. After this, we give the benediction. We all can lead together. If you're going out, please stop by the table and get one of the applications if you desire for prayer in school. Keep in prayer in school. Let's start here. Come on, come on, come on. Indiana? Louisiana. God bless them. You Mark? Shamar. I'm from Panama City, Florida. Panama? What's, give me your name again. Marquila. Marquila. Okay. God bless you. I'm glad to have you back, Malachi. Amen. Barbara, I'm from Quentin. Glad to have you, Barbara. Amen. Marilyn and I live in Quentin. Both of y'all live in Pontiana. Well, we invite y'all tomorrow to the Bible study out there. Is that 5 o'clock? Uh, what's the name of that place? Sola Vida, Rivera. There's a lot of y'all that know they'll be ready. I hope to see y'all tomorrow if you can't make it. Huh? All right, right here. Corey Turner, nice to meet y'all. All right, Brother Turner. He said that got too much. Too much. <laughs> God bless you. We have someone down here. Um, amen. Glad to have you with us. Norm, come here. Did we, did we get your name? No. Hey. Oh, Lord. She act like she know me. Come on. I'll I, I hold you. She's, she's just like anointed me is. <laughs> What's your name? Brianna. Brianna. 
glad to have you, Brianna. God bless you. You want to go back to mommy? She, oh, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you what this is a sign of. She going to get a Holy Ghost filled, fired up man of God in her life. That's all it means. All right. All right. So I want you guys, uh, we will have you to come back here. And uh, if there's any particular thing that um, you want me to pray for them, they'll give you a little card, write it out. I'm going to be touching the green with it. Amen. Come on, follow me. Amen. Come on. Come on, baby. All right. Huh? What? <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'll walk all the way back with y'all. Oh, Lord. <laughs> all right. She said she... <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> she said she can turn it loose. Been so blessed today. Y'all ready? The word has been spoken. Amen.